good afternoon all it is my privilege and pleasure on behalf of indian maritime university chennai campus to welcome you today to this webinar i am delighted to have our special guest dr ella chari with us to share his experience and knowledge through this webinar thank you for accepting our invitation professor i would like to extend a special welcome to our beloved campus director and our honorable head ctc and research for their presence in spite of their hectic schedule it is my duty and honor to welcome all our faculty members and cadets to this webinar there is a saying in tirukural arivudaiyar ellam mudaiyar arivular ennudaiyar ennum illa the meaning of this the wise is rich with every blessing blessed the fool is poor of everything possessed all should sharpen our mind with useful information regularly so we all can orient to today's lecture thank you thank you uh, dr chari colleagues dear students a very good afternoon from miami chennai campus i welcome you all for this webinar we have been organizing technical and other lectures regularly the regularity was disturbed by the pandemic it's good to see this being taken forward the topic for today is autonomous ships the topic is currency and brings in not only technological issues but also affective human related issues but innovations are inevitable sukant ratnaka the author he says that innovation is an outcome of a habit not a random act this is very true for the times we live in where gadgets and better than previous models flood our life space the idea of autonomous ships has certainly caught the fancy of the industry the levels of autonomy are being defined the merits and demerits are discussed in many forums real crafts have also started to appear there are skeptics who argue that these vessels and equipment will be expensive maintenance of sophisticated equipment backups payment to experts will be more than conventional shipboard staff collision security issues all these make the proposition prohibitively expensive there are the new now optimists who say that if self driving cars are possible why not unmanned ships sea lanes of much lesser traffic also lesser risks ships can be redesigned with less emphasis on hotel services more on cargo so ships will be more efficient and safer but as we move into the future with autonomous ships or with conventional ships humans will be there as architects as maintainers of advanced technologies and the machines frederick skinner the american psychologist he says the real problem is not whether machines think but whether men do so we must continue to cultivate our knowledge to think better with that note i leave you to the expert dr chari to carry this interesting topic forward thank you very much yes sir thank you sir now i would like to invite cadet arushi anurag saxena who will introduce you to our special guest please Dr. L. R. Chari is a marine electrical engineer by profession. He took his bachelor's degree in electrical engineering, master's degree in industrial electronics and control engineering, and doctorate in control engineering and automation from the VJTI University of Bombay. His doctoral thesis was on a system for nuclear reactor, power control, and adaptive autopilot and guidance systems for ships. Dr. Chari has to his credit over 30 research publications in various international as well as Indian technical and management journals and has presented papers at various conferences worldwide. He has authored a book in management science titled Corporate Transformation Without Tears. In 1979 he was the chairman of the International Ship Operation Automation Conference held in Tokyo, Japan. He is a recipient of the Achievement Award presented by the Institute of Electrical and Electronics Engineers USA for original work in 1974. A special award given by the Institution of Engineers India 
for outstanding contribution in 1975 and the H.S. Rao Memorial Award given by the Institute of Marine Engineers India in 1993, 2011 and 2013 for his work on harnessing renewable energy for generating electricity at sea. Dr. Chari retired as Executive Director of SCI Mumbai. He has been a member of the Advisory Technical Committee of Lloyd's Register of Shipping London, Chairman of the Ship's Electrical Equipment Standardization Committee of the Bureau of Indian Standards and a member of the Project Review and Steering Group of the Department of Electronics and the Department of Science and Technology of the Government of India. Dr. Chari... Dr. Chari... Dr. Chari is a member of the Institution of Engineers India and the Institute of Marine Technologists and a fellow of the Institute of Marine Engineers India. He was a member of the Tamil Nadu Maritime Board and a trustee of the Madras Port Trust. Dr. Chari has been a member of the Research and Recognition Committee of the University of Bombay and a distinguished professor and PhD guide of Amit University, Chennai. At present, Dr. Chari is an independent maritime consultant and a member of the School Board of Allied Studies and a PhD guide of the Indian Maritime University, Chennai. He is also a member of the Senate of the Manipur University, Impal. Wow, those are wonderful achievements. I am now eager to listen what his Varun, experience has Varun, to say. Varun, Varun, just a moment. Okay, we have our next guest, Dr. K Dr. Professor K. M. Shivakalundu, head CECT, has joined our meeting. So please, I would like to call him to deliver his address. Sir, please. Oh, thank you. It's not uh, really required. The already introduction has become uh, too long in <laughs> the subject itself. I wish uh, Dr. Chari to take the uh, uh, so proceeding forward, only just two sentences. This autonomous ship's body is uh, going to talk. It's a very relevant uh, topic for the day. And all the students, though they may, may or may not have a, a lot of uh, introduction at this stage, his introduction will be really interesting because he's coming from the industry. He will be talking with what he must have seen or experienced. Definitely, if not all the technicalities, at least the terminology should be able to stay with you for, for the time to come. So I request Dr. Chari to take over. Thank you. Yes. One request to all participants. Please mute your mic to avoid the disturbance. I now invite Dr. Uh, our special guest, Dr. L. R. Chari, to throw some light on this vast topic. Sir, please take over. Hi there, everyone. <clears throat> Good afternoon to all of you. And thank you for giving me this opportunity to talk on a subject about which everyone knows, including me, very little. But I'm having some difficulty in connecting now. Uh, just a moment. Yes, sir. You can present now. Yeah. Yes, sir. We are seeing. Uh, no, are you able to see my? Yes, sir. Screen? Are you able to see the screen now? Yes, sir. Just a moment. There is some glitch here. Yeah. Can you see it now? Yes, sir. Yeah. Okay. Now, this is a subject <clears throat> about which a lot have been said, not in the last one or two years, but right since 2001. I would like, oh, I'm, I'm having some glitches here. The 
professor you can uh, stop presenting again you present yeah i am trying to do that Can you are you getting it on the screen now? No, sir. Now I have. Is it okay? Can you see? Can you see anything on your? Sir, we could see your face. You have to share your screen, sir. Yeah, I have shared. I have, I have pressed the share one. I'm again having glitches here. Press on it. The way you have done earlier. Yeah, I am doing the same thing. Sir, you stop presenting initially. Again, you try to connect, sir. Just a moment. I'm trying to do it now. Okay. Are you getting it now? Can you see it now? No, sir. Yeah, yeah, yeah. If it, it's coming now. It's coming now. Yes, sir. Now, can you see? Yes, sir. Sir, you press F five, sir. F five. F five. Yes, sir. F five. One key is there on the top. F five. Yeah. Yeah. Now, are you go to slideshow? Present from the beginning. Are and the bottom you are uh, seeing some slideshow presentation, no, sir? You click that. Yeah, I'm clicking that. Yeah, here, here. Yes, sir. Is yeah, it okay yeah, now? It's, uh, yeah, it's okay, sir. Yeah. Yeah. I welcome all of you to this uh, webinar on this interesting subject and a bit confusing subject as well, because everybody has tried to say. Many things about it, but the ground reality is people are still trying to find out solutions for so many questions or problems that are going to arise out of this. But I would like to start with two questions, and these are the two questions. What was the first automation device that was installed on board a ship, and in which year did this happen? I don't want to wait for noise again. Can you see it now? Hello. Yes. Sir. Yes. Yes, sir. Okay. Now my question is: What was the first automation device that was installed on board a ship, and which year did this happen? I won't wait for the answers. I'll straight away tell you what is the answer. Normally, one thinks of automation device as something. To do with electronics, microprocessors, computers, etc. But that's not true. The first automation device that went on board a ship was about 200 years ago. Are you not surprised? You would say 200 years ago there were ships with sails. What automation device can ships with sails have on board? No. About in 1819. some adventurous engineer or artisans as they used to be called those days said that the industrial revolution has thrown up a beautiful device called steam engine why not we install this on board a ship so in 1819 the first ship had its single cylinder double acting steam engine on board but single cylinder double acting steam engine is not the automation device along with this came a device called the centrifugal governor this is the first automation device that came on board a ship this automatically regulates the flow of steam into the engines as all all mechanical engineers or others will tell you to regulate the flow of steam into the 
in, uh, into the cylinder to maintain constant speed. So this was the first automation device that went on board a ship 200 years ago. So we will quickly look, go through the entire list which of automation device that went on board. In 2019, between these two years, the centrifugal governor went on board. Then there was a gap of nearly 90 years. And in 1908, the first gyro compass went on board a ship. In 1920, during the war years, they were getting prepared to install autopilots on plane. Once it was a success on plane, they somebody thought, why not we have it on board a ship as well? So the, it was it was not called autopilot that time. It was called self steering gear. So the self steering gear was the next automation device that went on board ships in 1920s. Thereafter, somebody thought, why not why not have an automatic uh, automation automatic boiler control system because they had problems of maintaining the drum level in the boiler so first automatic boiler control system went on board uh, in 1925 and the same year the echo sounder also went on board in between 1936 and 1940 the radar which was put on aircraft during the war for the for the war at the same time, somebody thought, why not we have radar on board? So between 1936 and 1940, the radar came on board. Then there was a lull of nearly 25 years. Between 1965 and 1970, main engine automation, main engine automation, and generator automation came on board. Between 65 and 70, the condition monitoring system that is to monitor the condition of the piston, the cylinder liner, etc., came on board between 1965 and, uh, 1965 and 1970. In 1965, again, for the first time, the Lloyd's Register of Shipping classified ships as unmanned ships with unmanned machinery space, UMS class or the DNV used to call it E-Zero class, engineer geo class. That means there won't be an engineer in the engine room. It will be a locked engine room and the ship will function as an E-Zero or UMS ship. Subsequently, in nine, between 1970 and 75, satellite navigators, Lodicator or Lodmax computer came on board. In 19, between 1975 and 1980, shipboard computers and LAN came on board. Between 80 and 85, satellite communication and GPS came on board. In 1990, it was the era of PLC, Programmable Logic Controller on board. Between 95 and 2001, all the GMDSS equipment, namely the EPUB, SART, ECDISC, AIS, etc., came on board. And there was a gap of four years the concept of Internet of Things, you might have heard about it, was, was getting evolved. And in 1999, the concept of the Internet of Things and autonomous ships were introduced on a theoretical level. Between 2019 and 2020, the first autonomous cargo ship, Yara Birkelen, was launched. But it has still not taken off. So, you might ask, why did I run through the entire list? This is mainly because all each and every one of these equipment, excepting the centrifugal governor, form a part of the autonomous ship. Autonomous ship, what are the drivers? What made people to think of autonomous ship? First, success in the fields of space and nuclear technology, rapid development in information, communication technologies, and artificial intelligence and machine learning development of high reliability and high availability components like smart sensors, smart actuators and systems, then advances in sensor fusion technology, and finally, the Internet of Things. We will take one by one. I will give example in detail for one or two and then rush through the rest. Then there is always this inconvenient, inconvenient maths, maths behind everything. And behind automation, autonomous ships also there is maths. What are these mathematical formulas? They are two. One is called the Kalman filter. 
which was first used in 1967 when the Apollo when the Apollo 1 was launched by the NASA. This was used to detect objects in this space, identify them and clearly define them. So this is the one which is now being used in self-driven cars and also aircrafts and it is now coming on board ships. The second mathematical formulation or uh, we, uh, or the uh, what you call algorithm which is behind autonomous ship is the Bellman equation. This Bellman equation is a decision making equation. It comes under the subject of Markov decision process and this is the formulation or this is the algorithm about which I won't talk now because all of you will fall asleep. So we will proceed ahead without this for the moment. We'll talk of smart sensors. Now, this is a bookish definition of smart sensors, but you, uh, you, you can find it in any book or, uh, or even on the internet. It says that it has got a lot of brains built in it. So I will quickly go, in, go into the architecture of a smart sensor. The smart sensor, as you see here, is capable of measuring temperature, which you see on your left-hand side bottom, temperature, pressure, acceleration, position, magnetic field, and also radiation for nuclear ships. This is called the uh, uh, sensor interface. You see, what it does is what an individual will do on board a ship. For example, if you take a generator on a ship, it has got uh, uh, temperature sensors called PT-100 in its windings. If the temperature goes very high, the alarm is given. So this temperature sensor normally gives the alarm and the engineer immediately goes and sees what is wrong. If the, tempera if the temperature sensor has failed, what it does is it stops the generator, changes the temp uh, sensor and then uh, go uh, and starts the, uh, start the generator again. But there is nobody on board a ship. What do we do? So we have this smart sensor because there is no smart electrical officer on board now. What happens? If a sensor fails, then there is a standby sensor called hot standby that switches on. And there is a third sensor, which is a cold standby, which becomes hot standby. And once that happens, all these devices, which you see here, they start functioning. Immediately, a, a message is sent to the inventory control device on board to find out whether any more inventory is left. Otherwise, a message is sent to the headquarters stating that there is no extra sensor available. It sends the specification for the sensor and tells the ETA the expected time of arrival at the next port. And so that at the next port, the uh, the temperature is uh, the sensor is placed on board and the artisan uh, and the engineer can come and work on it this is the how the smart sensor works on board the sensor fusion technology is another technology which was used first for the aerospace missions now what does it do there are several sensors for example when to find out what is happening outside an autonomous ships, you have the radar, the LIDAR, the night vision camera, and the day vision camera. Now, each one has got a property. The LIDAR can accurately tell the speed of the target, target ship, if you say, and the radar can give accurately the position, the closest point of approach and the time to closest point of approach. And of course, the daylight camera will give you the entire picture and the night vision camera will give you the picture of their target in the night. But all the best qualities of each one of the sensors is brought together by the sensor fusion technology. This is how it happens. You have the LIDAR, you have the radar, you have the night vision camera. All the best properties of this are brought together here, here, and they use what you saw the Kalman filter to clearly define the target. 
This Kalman filter is a recursive process. It keeps on repeatedly sensing it and refining it till it gets an exact picture of the target that is to be tracked. Now I'm giving you, since I do not have, or all the developers of autonomous ships are playing very close to the ch chest and not saying a word about how the targets are detected. I have taken this example. They have also taken this example for the, from the aerospace. Now here you have an aircraft which is facing five aircrafts here and it is in the dead of the night, it cannot see. It uses the sensors which I showed you, radar, radar, etc., and it gives a rough picture here. This is the rough picture. And the sensor fusion technology using Kalman filter refines it in such a way that the pilot on board this aircraft gets a very clear picture. The same technology is being used on board cars, self-driven cars, and now on board autonomous ships. Smart actuator is something similar to a smart sensor. It is an integrated actuator of all components such as motors, controllers, sensors, communication unit, and it acts smartly. If one actuator fails, it switches automatically to the next actuator and then sends a message, checks the inventory. If there is a spare actuator, if it is not there, a message is again sent to the headquarters so that at the next port of call, a spare actuator is connected to the ship. Now, this is how it is. Okay, this is the device. This is called technical electronic data sheet. This is called the health electronic data sheet. This maintains the health of the sensors. This maintains the technical specification. Once a sensor fails, all this technical details about the sensor or the actuator is sent to the headquarters to the TCP IC IP network. Now we come to Internet of Things. You might be already aware of it. IoT is a network of physical devices, appliances, and other items embedded with electronics, software, sensors, actuators, network connectivity that enables these objects to connect and exchange data without requiring human to human or human to computer intervention. Each object is used uniquely identifiable through its embedded computing system but is able to inter interoperate, that means communicate with each other. Now, this is the block diagram. This is the diagram of Internet of Things. Any device, any time, anybody, any place, any path, and any services are all interconnected. Now, this Internet of Things, uh, Internet of Things came on board for the first time somewhere around 2005. Now, on board a ship, we have a number of systems. You have the navigation systems, you have the uh, maneuvering system, you have the machinery management system, you have the propulsion control system, the power management system in the engine room, the alarm management system, the cargo management system, ballast management, each one is computer control. And when they are all integrated together to talk to each other, you get what is called the internet of things on board ships. You have mentioned all these systems which you saw there are all interconnected and each of the above system is in a, is a network of other subsystems within themselves. Now, this is the block diagram of how the entire thing is displayed. No autonomous ship uh, developer is coming out with this sort of a diagram, but then it is not uh, space technology or rocket technology for anyone with a little bit of a common sense can put it together. These are all the bridge equipment, bridge control on, on, on the on the bridge of the ship. All these controls are on the bridge of the ship. All these controls are in the engine control room. They are all interconnected through Ethernet switch and router. I hear also Ethernet switch and router to a central processor. And then that is connected to the backbone uh, internet switch and that is connected to the satellite communication or VSAT so that if it is a remote control, somebody can directly operate any one of them and control any one of them. Now, what about what is happening outside the ship that is missing in this? We will now have a look at it. That is called situational awareness system. It tells what is happening outside. Obviously, 
well, to avoid collision, you should know what is happening outside the ship. So you have these proximity sensors consisting of high definition visible camera, infrared camera for the night vision, LIDAR and radar. All of them through uh, the fusion technology, uh, sensor fusion technology, which is situated in this box along with the Kalman filter. And what is happening outside is conveyed to the internet of things here. So this gets plugged in here. You, before this, you didn't find it here. Now you find it here. So this makes the ship a completely autonomous ships. These are all the block diagrams of various systems. Now this ship, if you want, it can be controlled from remote. Anything can be accessed by the remote controller. He can navigate, he can operate the thrusters, he can do the ballast management. He can do the cargo management, he can propulsion control, etc., etc. The whole thing is under control. And that will happen if it is under remote control. But then the other alternative is self controlled. There is nobody on board a ship. You have what is called AI captain, artificial intelligence captain or captain AI. It controls everything by itself. So these are the two types remote control and fully self controlled ships. Now, this is the general picture of the types of ships you will find when autonomous ships starts coming on board. You will have the man ship with all the rules and regulations applied for man ship. The man on board controls. He gets the inputs from various. This is the deck officer on, on watch. He gets all his inputs from radar, egg disk, etc., etc., and controls. Okay, that is the normal one. The remote control one. This person sits somewhere ashore, it is an autonomous ship. He also gets all his inputs through the satellite from the radar, exit, etc. on the ship through the satellite, he gets input and he controls the ship through the satellite. And this is fully automated ship, self automated. That is the computer gets everything and it is something to similar to your totally autonomous ship. And this is the autonomous ship with both the possibilities, remote control from by a man who is sitting by the commander who is sitting in a remote place or by this self control. And this is how this looks. Now, what is the advantage? You see here, the accommodation is missing. There is no accommodation. So you get one more additional hold, cargo hold. You see this container ship here, it doesn't have an accommodation and it is full of so the cargo carrying capacity increases by leaps and bounds by nearly 20%. Now we'll see, take a look at the pros and cons of autonomous shipping. Let us look at the pros. Short port stay, because these days ships don't stay in port for 10 to 12 hours and, and the tankers, uh, uh, tankers even less. Faster turned around because of short port stay. No crew cost, hence lower operating cost because there is no crew on board. Lower freight rate because lower operating cost. No accidents due to human error or failure. This is a subject, a debatable subject. There is one institution in uh, Germany, according to which 95% or sorry, 80% of the accidents takes place due to human failure. So if there is no human on board, by logic, they say there won't be accidents. Okay, no more cases of criminalization of seafarers. What is criminalization of seafarers? Suppose a, a ship is sailing and collision takes place, but your ship is not at fault, but you are in a, some other territorial waters. So those countries can simply go and arrest the master and put him in jail, even if it is not going to be his fault. It has happened to our officers some time back. So if there is nobody on board, there is no criminalization. No dependence on crew supplying countries. India is going to suffer. The countries which will suffer are India, Bangladesh, Philippines, Ukraine. Uh, and these are the major crew supplying countries. The other advantage, it is, this is an advantage of the ship owner. The ship owner has full control of the ship. Nobody else is controlling. Now let us take the cons vulnerable to cyber attacks. As I showed you, anybody can enter 
and if he knows the identity of the ship he can enter and attack the ship increase piracy threats you must never underestimate the pirates they are as much up to date with technology as we are so they can always get into your uh, into your system on board divert the ship wherever they want hijack it to their place empty the ship of cargo and leave it there so this threat is very much here accident due to machine failure how do you account for this every machine can fail so these people are not taking that into account but we are taking this into account here on the against the cons accidents due to error caused by human operator of remote control ships you say that there will not be op- uh, any er- any human error if there is nobody on board but if somebody is sitting at a far off place he is a human being will he not make any error this is not accounted for increase scope of maritime frauds because of all this no guarantee of cleaner and safer ship suppose this marco marpol conditions are very very strict suppose by some misfortune the system fails on board and pumps out the bilges in places where it is not supposed to fun so what will happen there is no guarantee of this the ship is going to be severely punished for the bre- for the breakdown of the uh, of the machinery on board threat to employment opportunities for mariners this is a big big threat for countries like india search and rescue operation at sea difficult you, you, uh, as all of you know when an accident takes place the the coast guard and the much and the navy they become they take charge of the site they become the site commander and they talk to various ships to come to the aid if a, a fully autonomous ship is there ship is there in the vicinity it will first of all not come to that place because thinking it is going to crash into some ship it will either go away or not heed to the call even if the on site commander talk tries to talk to somebody on board there is nobody on board so search and rescue operation at sea becomes difficult you know it is a duty of every ship when there is an alert from another ship it is supposed to go to itself but with an autonomous ship that will become difficult so search and rescue operation will become difficult potential danger for all man ships see overnight every ship is not going to be an autonomous ship there will be other ships fishing vessels and uh, sailing vessels and if it is not prop- if the rules are not properly defined then there will be lot of accidents safety and security issues for ships operating in conflict zone i'll give you a typical example it happened when shipping corporation ship somewhere in the 80s were, was loading in one of the gulf ports somewhere near iran Uh, Iran and Iraq were our friends on our ships they used to paint in la- capital letters india both are our friends our ship one of our ships which one of our colleague captain bharadwaj who is now in masa he was command of the ship his ship was following another sci ship the first ship was directly bombed the wheel of was bombed and it was incapacitated totally the entire convoy stopped in a situation like that when you are in a war like situation how do you manage but somehow those that ship in spite of a damaged part of the bridge it came out that came out of zone because somebody was there on board if it is a totally autonomous ship how do you take care of this and last but not least there is no legal framework on place as yet if you go on board a ship and go to the captain and also the chief engineer ask them to bring all the certificates there are no less than 40 certificates on board and all of them are governed by some rule or the other so this legal framework is still to be put in place how relevant are all these imo conventions ships are highly controlled with lot of regulations and imo is the one which makes this makes it possible to have the regulation the first one is solas safety of life at sea but when there is no life on sea what is the meaning of this somebody suggested there should be one more o here it should say 
safety of other life sets because there will be other ships without automation on board then the second this is coal reg collision regulation or rules of the road the rules of the road and collision regulations which exist now are for man ship how will it be how will an unmanned ship follow these rules this is the marpole marine pollution again it is for man ships gmdss again for man ship stcw convention standards of training certification watch keeping when there is don't be no watch keeper on board what is the meaning of this convention so and this is the last one maritime labor convention when there is going to be no labor on board what is the relevance of this so all the above mentioned conventions are applicable to manned ocean going vessels and these conventions need to be reviewed and the regulatory requirements redefined by imo to make them relevant to autonomous ship that means there is a lot of work yet to be completed right now let us take look at the journey towards autonomous ships the sizes of ships crew has been decreasing way back in the 70s 80s and 90s there used to be about 50 to 70 officers and crew on board that got reduced to now it is about to 28 soon large ship will start sailing without anybody on board autonomous ships designed to be controlled remotely and self navigated ship will look distinctly different than from today's ship because it will have no accommodation as you have already seen the picture soon advanced automation will help battery operated ferries now being built in norway to uh, using electrical energy in most of the most efficient manner that will save pollution but will it save accidents is still not known <clears throat> now when autonomous ships become the order of the day there will have to be remote control centers when ships are able to operate completely on their own there will have to be somebody ashore who can take charge if and when conditions demand different types of ships or different ships at various stages of their voyages will in all likelihood require very different levels of oversight and control or supervision for instance an ex a cargo ship far out in the sea will normally need little human uh, supervision with a single shore based controller or commander overseeing the operations of many ships but when a vessel is operating in a congested lane say for example in the shipping lanes like uh, uh, like the suez canal then you a close monitoring of the ship will be necessary so this will require much more close careful and full attention of an individual controller or commander sitting at a remote center how will this remote remote control look center look this is how a remote center will look like you see these the people they are trained technologists at probably at that point in time there won't be a division between probably there won't be any division between deck and engine officers you will have both the people doing both the jobs because they should be trained to control the ship and also troubleshoot from a remote location so sometime back the danish people came with dual certification the same person will be certified <clears throat> as a chief engineer and also as a master but that thing failed miserably that has been discontinued but if the autonomous ships become order of the day <coughs> and it has to be controlled from a control center then the people who are manning it will be marine technologists who will be a combination of a, a, a nautical officer and an engineer and therefore the training maritime education and training will also keep changing to meet with those requirements <clears throat> the benefits of autonomous shipping this is according to the concept developers obviously they are going to be very optimistic they say it will be safer it will be more efficient it will be cheaper nobody has done the economics still voyage economics has still not been done but they say it will be cheaper <clears throat> 
will have larger carrying capacity which everybody is very uh, is aware because there won't be any accommodation since there will be no accommodation it will offer less resistance to the wind and therefore there will be fuel optimization and it will help owners and operators to respond to growing shortage of crew <coughs> this is the thing which is now dictating all the owners <coughs> european owners to go for fully autonomous ships <coughs> again this is a pictorial form reduce environmental impact how we don't know reduce logistic cost because <coughs> the crew cost will not be there it will eliminate needless voyages there will be seamless connection for multimodal transport proactive cooperation with shore based operations <coughs> reform work styles in ocean transport reduce workload for crew members if there is no crew member on board then this doesn't arise minimize occurrence of accidents this is a doubtful thing <clears throat> now what are the challenges based on whatever we have seen so far the challenges are three four in number regulatory changes required to allow autonomous ships to operate safely <clears throat> insurance and legal liability related issues in the event of accident will the insurance company prepare to insure the ship question mark cyber crimes there will be piracy attacks already exist it will be only increasing <clears throat> so there is a need an urgent need for regulatory framework these organizations like advanced autonomous waterborne application of finland safety and regulations for european and man maritime systems in europe maritime autonomous systems regulatory working group uk and the international maritime organization <clears throat> are all working over time to put a regulatory framework in place before autonomous ships become the order of the day now <clears throat> we take a typical example this was the first people the rolls royce and the konsberg people were the first people to design a fully autonomous electrically driven ship these are the particulars this vessel will be equipped with battery which will be the permanent ballast and that will be driving the propulsion motors its cargo carrying capacity will be 120 tus and then there will be an automatic loading and discharging using electric cranes and equipment so there won't be any need for shore help <clears throat> the vessel will be used will be having automatic mooring system for berthing and unberthing which will be done without human intervention the operational area for will be within 12 nautical miles of coastal waters now we'll take a look at this ship i will have a ship of water before you can keep watching this Thank <laughs> you. 
So the shape of things you saw to come are, there won't be any <clears throat> dog side employment, no loading and discharging, people to load and discharge, no stevedores. The birthing and unbirthing will take place by all by itself and the ship will also shape, sail automatically by itself. Here is one more. This is autonomous birthing of the same ship. It used robotics to moor the ship. This is by the McGregor hatch cover manufacturers. So you saw robotics in action. Now, <clears throat> if there is going to be nobody on board, there has to be an arrangement for remote, remote troubleshooting. This is the one of the concepts which is likely to be adopted by autonomous ships. <clears throat> what if there was a way for employees to work together from anywhere when everything is on the line? Employees are the heart of every business. It's their resourcefulness, ingenuity, and drive that get the job done. But even the best employees need help from people who aren't there with them. Now employees on site can work side by side with experts in remote locations. <coughs> they can share what they see lend a helping hand, walk through the process step by step, helping solve problems in real time. This is a new vision for work. Now employees can work smarter and bring in the people they need with just a tap. They can troubleshoot, repair, and perform with confidence and speed. They can move freely, pull critical information into view, <coughs> and stay focused on the task. Their hands free to do the work. This is collaborative problem solving at full speed. Your people united across time and distance more connected more informed and more efficient now employees can work together from anywhere they can go there without being there 
<clears throat> this isn't the future. This is here and now. Well, this is still not come on board, but it is likely to happen if everybody, if the if if it becomes fully autonomous, maybe in the next 30, 40 years. Now, what happens on board? There is nobody on board, so there is no catering. But what happens on a cruise ship? You have to have a robotic galley. So even the kitchen is going to be managed by robots. So there goes the galley jobs as well. Now, on a passenger ship or a cruise ship, what will be the kind of service? There has to be a restaurant there, a cafeteria. And how will service take place? Take a look at this. So no daily crew, no chef, chefs, no servers, everything autonomous. Now, <clears throat> what you saw was the concept, but it has now become a reality. The first autonomous ship, car ferry Falco, it's a Finnish ship. It did its maiden voyage, a test voyage on 3rd December 2018 in Finland. The return voyage was under remote control from a place which was located 30 kilometers away. On the left, you see the control room. On the right, you see the car ferry. This was a conventional ship, which got converted into an autonomous ship, but it had for the maiden voyage, the entire crew on board on a standby mode. 
This is the first <clears throat> cargo ship to cross the high seas. This took place on 6th of May in 2019 from Merce Island in UK to Austin in Belgium. This was the third maiden voyage by a third ship owned by NYK Lions of Japan. This voyage took place on 14 September 2019 from Shinsha, China to Nagoya in Japan and from Nagoya to Yokohama. Now, part of this may not be easily visible, but I will, we will try it out. It was a night voyage, so things may not be very clear. Let's see. It was tested in the night time at 11.30 hours. But there was specialist engineers on board who designed the system called Sherpa system to monitor it. But there was, there was standby navigating officers and also engineer officers, but then they were only on a standby mode. So you see, the kind of computation which goes in the two equations which I showed you, that is the Kalman filter and also the Bellman equation, that these two are the underlying algorithms to navigate a ship safely. And that is precisely what you are seeing of graphs, which gets translated into command to the navigating system. The ship is in motion. All the parameters are being monitored. There are several ships coming on the way, but it avoids, collision is avoided. There is a planned course and there is a recommended course. If it finds the ship on, on head on, then it alters the course automatically following the rules of the road, ROR. That is, you always keep to the starboard side of the ship, the right, right side of the ship to avoid collision. And this is what is happening. It is finding another ship coming head on. It is changing its course in the right direction, keeping to the starboard side, altering the course to the starboard side. That is what is happening here. And after it passes the ship, it goes on its normal course. It returns to the planned course after avoiding any collision. The algorithm that is controlling this
sorry Are you able to see it now? Yes, yes. Yes, sir. Sorry, there's a small glitch here. Anyway, we are, we are towards the end of the presentation. Another five minutes. See, this is the situational awareness system which enables the ship to avoid a collision. Now, <clears throat> this is the latest one on 16th of September from Plymouth in UK to Plymouth in Massachusetts. This ship, it is a research vessel with nobody on board. And this is going to be the first transatlantic voyage. It's going to take six months because it is going to do the seabed survey. And <clears throat> we will see whether it, how it works. Uh, we'll take a chance. Yeah. With no. There are some existing vessels that are sort of remote controlled, but this isn't even that. The intention is it's fully autonomous. It's been trained with a whole load of different images uh, of things it might encounter at sea, from seagulls to boats to icebergs. And that will inform the decision made by the AI captain on where to steer next. And that will also factor in things like the weather to say if there are any storms it should avoid. And a rules-based system determines where the course that the captain's proposing is actually legal according to the highway code of the ocean. The beauty of an unmanned vessel is that most of the space on board a normal boat is given over to accommodating the people, so some to sleep, a galley for them to eat, storing all their food, all that stuff. And we don't need any of that. So the entire content of the boat can be given over to scientific experiments. And there's a number of research pods down the length of the middle hull where people put uh, experiments to uh, do various pieces of investigation while the boat's out at sea. Sorry, I'm, <clears throat> I keep going back. There is some glitch. Now, <clears throat> some kind of a survey was done to find out what is the reaction, what are the reactions of the people. The question asked was, do you think the presence of, a, of crew on board vessels will always be essential for shipboard operations? 84% of the people surveyed said yes. 6% said only in crowded areas. And 10% said, we don't know, they don't want. And then on the right hand side, you are seeing 
strongly agree that who is required on uh, not required disagree 51 agree is 46% you require on board now these are the timelines tentative timelines 2018 the remote support operation with certain functions already we have passed it we are in 2020 not fully met but four vessels have already tested uh, gone on sea trials to test the autonomy by 2025 remote and autonomous short sea vessels that is mainly for the coastal voyages will be in fully operations operational according to this timeline and by 20 dash maybe in 29 you will have remote and autonomous ocean going vessels all over the place so we conclude by saying advancement of technology cannot be stopped so autonomous ships with no crew on board are distinct possibility in the near future but to reach that destination a few more important milestones need to be crossed in order to make autonomous shipping absolutely safe secure reliable and legal the last point is very important there is also a need to assure that there is no adverse socio economic impact due to introduction of autonomous shipping by this we mean that there should be it should not result into heavy unemployment because so many people so many types of jobs will be start lost but new types of jobs will be generated so if the new types of jobs that get generated equate equal the number of jobs there are then there is no problem but that is not likely to happen so we leave with these points to ponder if man himself is imperfect then can man made devices be perfect automation is a good servant but could prove to be a bad master including a master of a ship disruptive technology is fine but destructive technology is not because autonomous ships can be used by anti socials make two autonomous ships collide in the mid sea make two gas carriers collide and that will create disaster so destructive technology is not fine everything has to be done in a regulated way in a sensible way thank you thank you sir that was very good sir your point on history of autonomous ships like we all studied governor right without realizing it is a it is a primitive technology of our autonomous ship you also said about various equipments contributing in today's autonomous ship like sensors sensor sensor fusion technology about iot uh, remote and fuel remote and fully controlled ship where more cargo space is available due to no accommodation and and then you have very good presentation on pros and cons of the uh, autonomous autonomous ships how where how the change in training of the cadets will be take place how the change in environment of the study of the cadets will take place what are the challenges what are the needs in regulation etc and lastly the points or points on ponder was very good so i would like to go on to the next session of this webinar the the question and answer session is on anyone from the participant can ask the question but let me tell you one methodology to ask the question in order to avoid chaos <clears throat> please comment your questions in chat box or write queue once once your name is spoken i will tell you and you you can mute your and you can ask the question how so, many minutes for question and answer session i have two three minutes sir uh, okay okay i have because i have another engagement oh yeah go ahead go ahead mm -hmm. Yes, there will be more questions and answers that i can assure you <laughs> yes sir we got one question how can we pursue the autonom autonom autonomous shipping as a research or a field field in higher studies no i didn't get you what come again come again what is it how can we pursue autonomous shipping in as a research or a field in higher studies failed in higher studies 
No, I'm not understanding your question. What what you what are you trying to ask? Sir, Which, how, uh, can, how, how can you pursue this study? Uh, yeah. Autonomous shipping as a study. You want to study further on it, okay? Yeah. Oh, you can. Uh, you want to design al as I told you, there are two basic algorithms. One is called the Kalman filter, okay, and there is another one called the uh, Bellman equation. This is the latest. Then and the latest state of the art algorithm. So you can do research on this algorithm and make it more efficient. That is one research project I can tell you. You can find out methods to improve the fusion technology. You see, the uh, center yeah. fusion technology is another gray area where you can always improve. But when you apply it to ships, you see, when you apply it to aircraft or aerospace, the speeds are very, very high. For a ship, it sails at 15 knots. So there is a lot of time for the computer to compute the best strategy, even with the existing one. But you can certainly look, re, have a relook at the Bellman equation, or you can have a look at the Kalman filter and say, we can improve this and make the definition of the targets even better and faster. That is one area that comes to my mind. Always you can find out another method, another kind of sensor which can which can do something better than the lidar or radar it is all left le left to your yeah. imagination yes sir. Yes. Uh, one last question sir from our participants yes akshay raj you can unmute and yes sir sir just because we can't we can do something does not mean we should do like in case of autonomous ships because what if there is a failure of communication link between the remote control center and the ship and will they be able to control in case of multiple failures and what about the customer will they have faith on these ships in the starting phase when they operate for all these questions i have no answer that is because in the ponder i said if man is imperfect can man-made device be perfect no if it no. fails then what what happens is normally in a space mission they follow what is called the architecture is fs 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 sr what do these mean f first fs is fail safe if the first system system fails it a standby system takes over fs again if the second system fails the third third system takes over and the third system fails it is sr means safe return that will make your ship very, very expensive. In other words, if one main engine fails, you should have another main engine. If that fails, you have a third main engine. If that fails, you have a fourth main engine with a lower capacity so that you can safely navigate to the nearest shore. Okay? But what will happen? If you take the cost of a new ship, 30 to 35% is the cost of the machinery. If you are going to have three-time machinery, three levels of standby then what happens to the cost of the ship okay that is one problem the other problem when the cost of the ship increases will the insurance what will happen to the premium will the people will the insurance people ready be to insure your ship so these are the questions which i told you are still not answered regulations are not in place the insurance people are still are not on board they are just weighing the options because Things are in a very elementary state today. Only four <coughs> ships, only four ships have managed to do the sea trials. Uh, sorry, three ships have done it successfully. The fourth ship took place on the 19th. The voyage started on 19th of September. It is going to be a six-month voyage from USA, from UK to USA, transatlantic voyage. So that will throw up a lot of questions. So, as I said in the beginning, there are more questions. Then answers. Yes. Okay, sir. Now we'd like to go to the last section. Yes. Now I would like to invite Cadet Arushi and Urak Saxena to give the vote of thanks. <clears throat> it gives me a great honor to propose the vote of thanks to all who have helped us in making this webinar a very resounding success. First of all, I'd like to give my hearty thanks to our chief guest, Dr. Ella Chari, for gracing today's webinar. Thank you, sir, for your very thought-provoking and interesting insight into autonomous shipping. You made the webinar very lively and interesting for us all today. 
I'd like to express my deep gratitude to our campus director, Dr. Raju Balaji, sir, for his support and approval for this webinar. I'd also like to thank our HOD, Dr. K. Siva Sami, sir, for his valuable guidance and moral support for this webinar. I would also like to thank our SMET Techno Club faculty in charge, Dr. S. Thangalakshmi, ma'am, and all the other faculties for making this webinar extremely successful. Last but not the least, I would like to thank everyone for their cooperation in making this webinar a grand success. Thank you. I have, I have one small announcement to make for all of you. The Institute of Chartered Ship Brokers London, they are celebrating their Silver Jubilee uh, of the chapter opened in Dubai. And there I will be giving a talk on artificial intelligence applied to shipping. I'll be taking I will be demonstrating how the Kalman filter and how the Markov decision <clears throat> process gets converted into reality. So probably if you have any contacts with the International Chartered Ship Brokers Organization, the, uh, the, I believe the entrance is free. You can contact them and ask them for the link. Thank you. You're welcome. Yes. Yeah. And they are going to do it on Zoom where it can accommodate any number, I believe. Yeah, yeah, yeah. They have, they have viewership, they have viewership from New Zealand, Australia, Singapore, uh, Malaysia, uh, India, Middle East and Europe. So they have, a, they have going to, uh, they are expecting large uh, viewership. So if you're interested, you can get in touch with them. Thank you. Yes, we will try to touch with the help of our HOD. Now, I would like to successfully conclude this webinar with the national anthem. I would like to ask you all to please stand up and pay respect to it. Okay, we stand up. Jagannamada <laughs> Tava Shubha Ashisha Mage Gahe Tava Jaya Gatha Jana Gana Mangala Dayaka Jaya He Bhanaka Bhagya Vibhata Jaya He Jaya He Jaya He Jaya 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 He Thank you Prasad Thank you. Bye-bye. Thank you. Talk, talk to you later. Yes. Thank you all. Thank you to the comparing team. Thank you to every participant. Thank you very much. Thank you, ma'am.